Hi everybody, this is Mary from Sofa's Wellness. Today's topic is what's for dinner? That age old question, what's for dinner? Um, I get asked this question a lot. People say, you know what Mary, I'm so busy. How in the world do I get um, dinner on the table, a healthy dinner on the table consistently seven days a week? And so I thought I would shoot a video to tell you how I do it at my house. And I hope it helps you. Um, the way I, I start uh, planning what I do for dinner for the week is I will typically break it into sections. I will um, think of what my proteins are going to be, what my cooking method is, what my spices and sauces uh, might be, and what my veggies might go with all of this. So that's how I view it. So usually, because I'm a person who loves to think about protein first, that's what I'll start with, but you can mix it up in any uh, order that you want. But the point is just to be consistent and have a system. And I think uh, this works at my house and hopefully it'll work for you. So um, for the week, I'll write out the kinds of proteins that I want to have in my refrigerator freezer. Um, I'll typically do two uh, servings of fish one to two servings of turkey, a chicken, some lamb or beef. Um, you'll notice I have lamb first. That's what we prefer at our house. That's our preferred red meat. But if you do well with beef, that's your option. I'll, also, I'll always make some kind of an egg dish. And I'll have soup as an alternate. Um, just at the ready to, to mix in there on any combination I want. Okay, so once I've picked out what protein I'm going to use for dinner, I'll probably think of a cooking method next. So cooking methods are the usual. There's going to be sauteing, baking, stir frying, poaching, and grilling. Now if you're grilling, um, try not to do that more than once a week because the um, there are carcinogens that get formed on the meat when you grill. So um, the way to handle that is try to, to uh, uh, marinate that in some kind of lemon juice, lime juice, or cherry juice to kind of help with that, to help reduce the char, which is carcinogenic. So, um, and you'll notice that I didn't mention microwaving. Nope, microwaving is not an acceptable form of cooking. Um, so that takes care of the method. Next, I might think of spices and sauces, and by that I mean, what kind of cuisine do you want? Do you want Mexican, Italian, Cuban, Moroccan? You name it, the sky's the limit. If you have a spice mix that you want, or a sauce that you want, um, go ahead and factor that in. And next comes veggies. Now, veggies, um, the veggies, Americans don't do so well with that. Um, did you know that the average American maybe eats only about, um, say, seven to ten varieties of vegetables. I'm not sure if you knew this or not, but we are designed, us human beings, we are designed to eat over 100 varieties of vegetables. And so we want to uh, try to uh, increase the varieties of vegetables that you use. And the best way to do that, in my view, is to go to the farmer's market and see what's available. What's available during that season and farmers markets are also a great place to find heirloom vegetables um, which have a very high nutrient profile compared to conventionally grown vegetables so veggies we need to do a better job on that um, so pick the veggies that will go with your dinner um, speaking about veggies you'll see I have a dinner plate over here the dinner plate is divided into four sections. You'll see that vegetables cover 50% of the dinner plate. And that's what your goal is to aim for. 50% of your plate being vegetables. Um, if you're not currently eating 50% vegetables, work your way up slowly so that you don't get any digestive upset. And over here we have protein. Protein is about 25% of your dinner meal. Um, and that should satisfy most Americans. And you'll see this optional fourth quadrant here. That's optional. If you have a more sedentary lifestyle, um, you'll find most times that your protein and your two veggies will satisfy you. But if you're more active or you're just plain hungry that night, 
You can have an optional serving of something like, um, you know, rices, um, which would be, you know, black rice, brown rice, wild rice would be preferable to white rice. And maybe some quinoa that might be an option for you to have a starch over there to keep you full and satiated. Um, well, that's how I do dinner, how I plan dinner for the week. You'll see that it's a system. And if you're looking for additional help on, uh, you know, sometimes we all just need a little help. We might get a little stale. And I have two resources here that I love to share with people. My number one resource to reach for is Well Fed and Well Fed 2 by Melissa Jalwain. These books are great. Um, this first book here is great because she has a way to plan for, for the week, which she calls a cook-up, and um, lots of tips in there on that. And on this second book, there's a section in here that has lots of recipes for spices and sauces so that you can take these proteins and change them up and transform them uh, just in, in amazing ways. She does a really beautiful job on the spices and sauces, so you'll never be bored. Um, that's it for my tips on uh, how to get dinner on the table, healthy dinner on the table, seven days a week. It works when you have a system, something like this, and some resources, like I said, about the books. I hope that served you. Um, if you're seeing this video anywhere else but my blog, please head on over to sofaswellness.com and uh, make a comment in the blog. And I'd love to know what system you use to get dinner on the table seven days a week. And nope, uh, takeout's not an option. See you next time.